live in an information era. We travel in information super highways. As a result, we get tons and tons of information. We have a problem of information overload. In this situation of overload, we should know how to differentiate between the reality and virtuality. See, this is real. The greens, the earth, the sky and the rain in between. Everything is real. Same way, we should know the difference between pictures and pictorials. Like pictures are just snapshots. Pictorial is something behind it. Pictorials should have both the composition and components. And to know more about it, join us in this webinar conducted by class with support from UNESCO. Thank you. Good afternoon to all the academicians, media professionals, students, and parents who have joined us today. I am Vikash, teaching faculty in the Department of Visual Communication, Kumru Guru College of Liberal Arts and Science. I welcome you all for this third day of our international webinar series on digital and media literacy in this information age, organized by the Department of Visual Communication, Kumru Guru College of Liberal Arts and Science. Class Viscom started this virtual display of event to create awareness on media literacy, which is the need of the hour. This event is in partnership with UNESCO's Global Alliance for Partnerships on Media and Information Literacy. The pedagogical model of class is based on the doctrine of liberal arts education, which facilitates the students in acquiring a flexible and tailored degree with a wide range of optional modules within your major and beyond. Kumru Guru College of Liberal Arts and Science offers various programs under UG, PG, PG Diploma and Diploma. The Department of Visual Communication offers a three-year program in BSc Visual Communication and a one-year PG Diploma in Visual Effects. The college also offers a six-month diploma in journalism. Please do check our website or visit our campus to join us in the class journey. Now, let me welcome Mrs. Ananda Karthik to introduce our guest for today's webinar, Dr. C. R. Jay Prakash from PhD College of Arts and Science, Coimbatore. Over to you, Mrs. Ananda. Thank you so much, Professor Vikash. During these lockdown times, I truly miss stepping out from my home and heading to a place filled with natural beauty, chirping birds, deeper shades of green, sprinkled with touches of colorful flora, that whiff of crisp morning air, feeling that wet dew between my toes. Oh, don't I miss that. All I can imagine is picking up my camera and capturing that playful early morning light as it trickles through the towering trees and getting that perfect shot. I truly miss that. Coming to today's topic, when I think about media literacy, time and again, I think about the power of photography. Photography is a language in itself. It can do a huge service to this world. It can, in fact, expose environmental problems as nothing else can. And most importantly, it can help get people to care about something. In fact, the stakes could not be higher at this time. With man at the top of the ecological pyramid, it's ridiculous to think that we can destroy so many of Earth's plants, animals and ecosystems and not think that it can happen to us too. All of this will come back to bite us. And sooner than we think, it will not be pleasant. Or is that time already here? I wonder. To make us think with those beautiful visuals, that he has captured through his third eye, his camera, we have with us today, Dr. Jay Prakash. The key focus of our webinar today is pictures and pictorials, a wildlife photographer's perspective of media literacy. JP Sir, as he is formally called by his associate in the academic field, is an academician, journalist, photographer, environment conservationist, farmer, and most importantly, a passionate nature lover. Wow, now that's what I would call living life inside, true to your heart, and making every dream a reality to perfection. He's an associate professor and head of the Department of Communication, PSG College of Arts and Science, Canada. He 
He has two decades of teaching experience and seven years of industrial experience as a journalist, doing his work as a staff reporter and chief reporter. Dr. Jay Prakash has delivered over 150 lectures on media, wildlife, and conservation across colleges and universities in the country. He has chaired sessions in seven national and international conferences and has been an ardent researcher in the field of environmental communication. He is a member of several professional bodies that relate to wildlife, nature, and conservation. He has been a part of various nature conservation groups in the most remarkable world the one hundred undertaken by Wildlife Conservation Society of India and plenty of clients and environment. It's no doubt that he has won five national awards in photography as well as the national level. Apart from being an academician, Dr. Jay Prakash owns a certified organic farm in Kormitor, where he has cultivated more than 100 species of trees. I'm sure those of you who have seen the promotional video that we just played a little while ago have seen the pristine green and the beautiful sky amidst that heaven of nature that he has nurtured. Through. I must tell you all, during my interaction with Dr. JP over the past few days while organizing this webinar has made me realize that he has got truly an ocean of knowledge and talent, but he's such a humble and grounded person. I wish we all can emulate that too. It's indeed my privilege to share this forum with you, sir. Welcome to our program today. Thank you, Professor Ananda. So I think, no. That was like, you know, overwhelming uh, intro. Like, I, I don't think I deserve so much of praise. You know, I'm just like you all, uh, teaching uh, journalism. And of course, I had a passion towards uh, conserving nature. You know, earlier I was a journalist. And after coming to teaching, no, you know, journalism was much of legwork those days, not like these days. We need to go out and venture, talk to people, get the points and then report. So those days I do a lot of legwork. Then soon after uh, shifting to teaching, you know, it's like uh, you sit in a place, you prepare a lot and you deliver. So then I found myself like somewhere cornered or something. So it was that time, no, luckily at my college in PSE Arts College, uh, we started this uh, Department of Visual Communication. Actually, I teach for journalism, that is for MA Journalism and Mass Communication course. So we started uh, visual communication, you know, our management was, you know, you know, very helpful to establish a good studio in it, the first of its kind in our area and uh, PSE management supported it. And we came out with good studio and all lab equipment with which I learned a lot on photography, ventured out into the forest and took a lot of images. That's how all these images and my interest got nurtured and uh, that those images I am just showing it to you now. So officially coming to this event, you know, I should thank uh, the team behind the show. Uh, you know, being in the youngest uh, Viscom department in uh, Coimbatore, uh, they're doing a lot. I should thank, uh, you know, the HOD, uh, Mr. Leo Jetrud, you know, the professors, Vikash, Vijay, Ananda for uh, doing a wonderful job. You know, even this uh, technical thing, you are a bit ahead. And uh, I should thank you for uh, choosing good speakers also. You know, I'm really relieved a lot because the first day, day before, we had uh, uh, Dr. Firoz, an emeritus uh, professor from Kolkata. He talked about, you know, media theories. Then yesterday, we had uh, another vibrant speaker, uh, Professor Anubhuti from, uh, you know, the country's uh, premium um, journalism institute, IAMC. And she told uh, the latest, the practical things, being a curriculum designer for uh, NCRT and uh, various state and central government bodies. She told about uh, media literacy. In fact, she went a bit ahead. It's not just media literacy, media information literacy. She talked a lot about that. So they had given me a chance to go to the next stage. Otherwise, I need to start from there. What is media literacy? What is media? How the media function? So all the job, 50% of the job done by the speakers who had delivered great lectures yesterday and uh, you know looking at the audience you know you know i'm really afraid you know we get all you know quality questions and uh, I, I i i'm doubtful whether i could 
answer to you all you know such a big a wider audience like uh, like ananda was telling a day before from almost five continents over uh, 20 plus countries you know you could establish a small department from uh, the, the new department from uh, the class kumaraguru you could make it and uh, i thank uh, the the staff of uh, viscom here in uh, class the management of uh, kumaraguru institutions and also to my management that is at uh, psg institutions you uh, know they were kind enough to permit me to deliver lectures you know elsewhere and uh, so this is also a part of learning for us so that i can do it better in my home institution so a warm welcome again to all of you assembled here and uh, you know this next 50 minutes i am dividing into three portions my talk the first thing is like uh, this introductory portion this will go for around 10 to 12 minutes where i'll be uh, talking about um, uh, the the trends now then the fixed next 15 minutes i'll be moving on to these slides the last 15 20 minutes i'll be showing my pictures and uh, you know refer to uh, the difference between pictures and pictorial so uh, theoretically i'll i'll be talking to you for another 3 4 minutes then go to my slides then go to my images so this is my plan and before getting in you know i need to thank another person uh mr uh, krishnamurthy jairam he's a macro photographer the most humble person whom i have met and you know he didn't have his uh, college he didn't go to college so he could not publish scientific papers like us you know we we talk a lot ugc care scopes index everything but he cannot write a scientific paper but an ardent photographer you know weekly five days or six days he spends time in the jungle he's a, he was a, he's called as a macro photographer also and uh, you know till few years he never took any human beings as subjects he was concentrating only on nature insects animals flora and fauna so i learned a lot from him you know uh, there are lots of uh, photographers in and around uh, coimbatore you know you should know first why the interest comes for people inside in and around coimbatore it's because we live in the lap of western ghats that to the core area nilgiri biosphere reserve and if you had seen today's newspapers about the tigers lot of news it has coming it has come in and the, the good news is that uh, the western ghats especially this nilgiri biosphere reserve this three states karnataka tamil nadu and kerala in this particular area we have the largest density of tigers in the world of course 75% 70% of the tigers in the world we have it in india and in this 70% that is 2970 plus out of this 29 2900 plus tigers we have 724 in this particular area no doubt it's because of the rich fauna you know if you want an animal to thrive there if you want more wild animals to thrive in your area you know the grass the habitat should be very important so definitely this area will produce more and more uh, enthusiastic energetic photographers and we have uh, even in uh, kumaraguru institutions i remember uh, a couple of years back uh, they had created a gallery for uh, the legend tna permal the greatest wildlife photographer uh, the country had seen we still have that gallery and students can visit any time it's in the main hall and uh, tna permal uh, mr uh, jairam uh, srinivasan uh who is with the parks institutions dr tolstoy another uh, uh, uh photographer who is uh, an officiant from psg imsr mr prakash they are all photographers from this coimbatore area they have done a lot and needless to say now you know kalyan verma sachin rai lots of youngsters from bangalore again they link they are linked to this western ghats they are doing a lot they are my inspiration i learnt a lot from them so whatever uh, good things i owe it to them bad things you blame it on me so uh, going uh, further you know I, i wish to talk much about jairam i'll be telling more you know while i come to the pictures uh, uh going to the point um you know coming back to communication like uh, we 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 call ourselves you know we are in a digital world uh, digital revolution go digital that is the new norm we have to change so we live in a something called as a post truth society so truth it comes out afterwards 
post truth society and we call it as even post media society you could have seen what is happening in the media nowadays the mainstream media especially the print you know a, a real testing time you know people were thinking like uh, in india the circulation of uh, the print it's still going up even while it is going down in other countries but suddenly you know a shocking thing and many of my friends they are uh, losing their jobs circulation coming down and we need to depend upon advertisements and lots of things are changing so post media society another theory uh, you know uh, gatari uh, it, they they are coming out with these theories and post information society we have lots of information so what can we do with this information how to interpret with this information so that is the issue now so here comes this uh, digital uh, digital deluge you no know? we get tons and tons of raw information good bad so even now you could have you know many of us could have attended this uh, fact checking uh, programs google uh, news network india gni it is called as they gave me a chance to become a trainer for on fact fact checking and i attended one for done by bbc in chennai then we had one uh, reuters is also doing it so you know a lot of uh, events happening about how to deal with this misinformation and they were clearly classified fact checking so we need to you know separate this misinformation disinformation and mal information so that is the trend going on and uh, dr uh, anubuti was telling about it you know much clearly yesterday so i don't want to get into it further we have the problem of uh, digital you know deluge as a result you could have seen it's in engineering it's in arts college it's everywhere this data analytics data science it's it's a crazy thing happening now you could have seen lots of advertisements coming from educational institutions and job openings you know on data science and data analytics after this analytics you know there is something called data mining you know of course you mine and do the analytics data mining from mining you go for data carving you know lots of uh, statistical methods they are coming in you know it's a really good thing happening because of technology but it all depends upon how we are going to use it in the future so data mining then we call it as data carving then comes this algorithms and finally there is much talk it's not a hype it's happening artificial intelligence how we get to something how we are known to others you know everything is based on the algorithms through this computers so digitally you know there is a revolution happening and because of this revolution there is something happening in the media so this is the overview i'm coming to the photographic part here what has happened uh, you know to the images so uh, pictures and pictorial so what is the main difference i have told you the promo excellent promo done by the team you know uh, it, it is like uh, it's, a, it's it's a snapshot it just shoot at sight and this is an image you know you have something extra to tell so it's not uh, art versus technology it's something you know we need to blend it like we use the technology now you know uh, my class i might be talking to 22 30 of my pg students now i'm happy it reaches thousands and this is going to be live now and also it will be available in facebook uh, facebook and youtube you know anytime anywhere you can have an access so this is a great thing and uh, by using this artistic photography with a technical blend we can achieve a lot and uh, you know that's a problem also for uh, you know digital we have this digital divide digital natives and digital immigrants like me you know while preparing the slide no no i had to use almost three persons to be frank uh, i'm i'm called a photographer but i am not proficient enough in photoshop or lightroom you know i struggle there it's because i am slow in all these uh, with all these computing skills and even while preparing the slides no i was thinking of course this blue color i purposely wanted to wanted this blue because it that is in tandem with the uh, it's the, the label uh, the, the branding the class the logo everything their promotions came with blue so i chose the blue then the text you know i was struggling because we have problem you know it's a it's it's the time no this four months uh, we we are in the midst of webinars every day two three webinars coming and going and uh, you know people and uh, i attended few i conducted few from there i learned that 80% of the teachers and uh, students they they view this webinars through their mobile phones so once we start you know gone are the days we'll be preparing our powerpoint five lines six lines 
and bolder ones but that's in a big huge screen or in a laptop or in a desktop you will be seeing it big today with less than 20% of the audience using the big screen that is laptop or lecture through mobile phones so it has become order of the day so i have to redo it you see this is the problem with a technology and once you understand technology and adapt to it you have your content so content plus composition it works fine so this is what i am going to tell you in this uh, class on photography so components and composition is needed in pictorials but uh, there it is just you just take a snapshot so why this pictorial this is a concept of 1880s and uh, you know uh, it will be coming in the slide later but i wish to tell it now uh, the founder of uh, kodak eastman he told in 1888 you know you just press the button we'll do the rest no that was a famous quote those days you press the button we'll do the rest so when they invented the box camera the smallest one handy everyone suddenly became a photographer they are started venturing into the street they took left right center every angle and you know the professionals were worried what is this we have diluted this concept the aesthetic sense the composition everything is gone but luckily you know good photography you survived it developed so similar situation has come today that is why i have taken this pictorial because 1880 to 1880 to 1920s you know this concept of pictorials came in and people followed it judiciously people like jairaman see he is still not on whatsapp it's a technological help to us to promote ourselves that's all but he the humble man he still has his uh, email his phone number that's it and he has published in more than 400 journals like bbc and uh, national geography magazines and journals imagine so without all these technology you could do it imagine with good technology you know he he'll, he'll do a lot so there this uh, after 1820s it's it, it's photography is still thriving with the help from technology and now as i told you this digital thing has come in we are moving into dslrs to uh, mirrorless cameras and the social media has come in and this has helped us to take our photographs you know viral so and in this situation you know we have another uh, thing coming in like we call it as we might even call it as the a disruptive technology the drone cameras the camera traps the gopro you know i could see one of my student you know he was taking lot of you know the ground level shots how did you make this he was telling sir i have a gopro camera i have trained two of my dogs i tie one camera to the first dog i have one camera i tie it to the dog the, the other dog will be a guard to it so wherever i go the dog follows you know i i operate uh, the camera and i click it and the dog moves fine the other other dog acts as a guardian see technology how they are going to use it and uh, today's newspapers you would have seen as i told you this uh, tigers count 2976 it was done through camera traps earlier no you know my 100 treks in the jungles we used to conduct uh, wildlife estimates gone are the days today we don't need volunteers camera traps you know and one good news for the koyamatu forest 11 tigers have visited koyamatu forest in that year 2018 that's the study so i come back to pictures and pictorials that is the theoretical part since this is going to be you know available in youtube and facebook no i might go a bit fast to compensate the time which i have taken in my first portion this is my second part so what is a picture design or representation by various means like painting drawing photography it's a scene snapshot pictorial is illustrated expressed in pictures tells a story in aesthetic sense so components and composition are very important why pictorial why should i discuss about this why should i talk to you you know i told you no you press the button we'll do the rest george eastman and because of that the idea of photography you know people thought slowly degrading then and now because of digital thing damage is the art of photography you know another photographer which i failed to recognize in the beginning was mr k maradachalam from kaimatu he owns a studio but he is not a commercial studio owner right he he tells in his class when i had my beginning 
photography the, the beginning as a toddler i went to him sir teach me some photography so he his slide he told you press the button the problem starts now yes once we click something in my in our camera we don't know what to do you know those days it was like that when i had my digital camera in my hand i used to shoot in raw convert into tiff then into jpeg then uh, post it in my website you know it became a three day affair two days i go to the jungle third day it'll, i'll be sitting here with all tick bites you know scratching my legs and arms and you know lots of uh, technical things post processing came in earlier it was a bit less of course the, those with slides also they had real trouble but uh, you know it's another thing uh, we need to remember uh, mr k mardachalam who was also uh, you know joining the team so the the basic difference uh, you know purely representative it's a straight photography so is reality without a filter or artistic pictorial is creating an image so that is what you know you, you know the difference between the it's just a photograph and an image image is something you no know, carrying a content rather than simply recording it later uh, this uh, pictorial was called as art photography by a renowned uh, photographer you know commentator alfred stiglitz impressionistic then a german subjective photograph spain interventionist definitions so you know there are lots of definition i'll be you know telling you the smallest one so that you know it will be difficult for you to follow when i read it from the screen vague shapes subdued tones to convey the scene of elegant melancholy but this definition was earlier definition in 1880s you know it was very vague and uh, it was a, it's a poetic melancholy right it, those days you no know, one image you no know, they'll take four or five images they'll uh, just uh, uh, you know just a pose they'll they'll merge it and uh, four or five animals will be added there today we don't do that you know one frame you have only one exposure those days five exposures they they, they used to join it so it, it started like that then symbolic element of cultural meaning visual experience embedded in a historical context like uh, dr anubuti was uh, telling yesterday how the image of uh, the kids running towards the photographer it stopped the vietnam war now one image you know with lots of background you know lots of details components composition it could stop a war one image so that is the power of a pictorial so a uh, use of dramatic lighting and shading to convey an expressive mood next so i'll go with the smallest definition because the bigger one you can read it anytime you can come back and uh, see it in uh, youtube pictorialism is eternal because it's based upon the beauty first yes that is why this art survives an important thing you know because i was introduced as a wildlife photographer which i don't believe i am just a photographer i have a camera that's all so but what is inspiring is this what atmosphere is to nature is a tone to a picture so if you want to take you know you know an image of nature atmosphere is very important same way for a picture the tone is very important and that's it so with this idea i wish to show you some of my images and you know i wish to tell you that uh, mr uh, uh, jairam has shared a few images in fact he he was ready to share many images i just took two out of him because he had never shared his images you know he keeps it you know intact and you know how our uh, our mindset how to play with others images without giving any credit so you know i i felt you know Uh, not to use much of his images and one day we'll bring him you know, you know he is a class apart so i'll use his images then how he converted my images into a pictorial that is he he teaches me pictorial by right while i talk about pictorial you know i just read it from the old books from the uh, internet but learned a lot from him so all those three it comes in my next part so we are going to the images so this is an image of a frog it's just a frog right for all of us it's a jug wildlife photographer it's a frog a conservation photographer he'll try to know the genus species the habitat its life cycle everything but here i'm not telling this is a pictorial but this is unique thing is again this frog is named after mr jairam he discovered it and you know he never went to college 
so he can't write scientific papers so he worked a lot in the field took images you know zoological uh, uh, society of india or botanical survey of india whenever they find new species they ask this great man to take some images they'll take him so this is a frog you know the species named uh, uh, jairami you know in, the, in uh, italian uh, it goes like this so he has discovered uh, you know this frog one frog and one spider is named after him so that is the credit and we are going to see his images also this is the image which i wanted you know now you take just two images like this that is enough for your life why you take two one you take no people will tell by mistake you would have clicked you know second you have to prove it again so this you know the beauty of it you know we may not observe the real beauty the lighting because of a smaller uh, mobile cameras or you know not so clear uh, laptops you know this is the, the lighting diagonally coming in and uh, you know the birds also flowing out you know a meadow flushing meadow the trees everything is there this is what is a typical 100% pictorial i would uh, you know i'm i'm not qualified enough to comment on a, a mentor's picture no this is the, the lesson this is the theory a pictorial example the another one so you needn't travel a lot to take those pictorials you can have it anywhere see this image the person at the center is uh, uh, mr uh, srinivasan and uh, you see it's it's a morning light i think this might be somewhere uh, near masnagudi to that uh, mavanalla road somewhere they are standing the other side the moya river might be there and see the morning light it passes through the leaves you know the 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 transparent the opacity the color you know that that brings the mood you know the other person they just talking casually to those uh, people one is his student devendran is uh, his uh, student again he was he did his viscom is one of the colleges in the coimbatore and they were on their uh, weekend uh, you know uh, a trail or trek so there they could uh, think. and whenever i uh, when i think about uh, srinivasan when one one interesting thing comes no this is again part of media literacy uh, going bit uh, away from pictorial you know he you know we the photographers not we those four, four or five we, whom i mentioned no they used to go for uh, weekends because they are all very seniors to me and you know uh, mr jairam he got us uh you know credit the arps uh, associate of royal photographic society membership that is uh, london in 1977 most of us would not have been born there you know those days you know how it was covered uh, in the radio radio was the biggest medium not much of newspapers and uh, television was almost not there he was the youngest in the world to receive the honor that is becoming an arps fellow imagine that is one word which I, one sentence if i had told about this earlier you no know, i needn't talk anything about him so he took this image and when they go coming back to srinivasan you know one thing happened and he he was giving an interview to one newspaper he was telling like he you know for me it took 100 treks to sight a tiger those days 15 years back you know tigers were less not like uh, today and for them it would have taken much time also and he told happily to a journalist i sighted a tiger in bandipur and they had a detailed interview and they were asking where you work and i was i am working from singanolu that is my base and the next day news it came as uh, srinivasan sights a tiger at singanolu <laughs> and uh, this is and today we can use this as a misinformation right it was not done intentionally by mistake you know because that reporter is new to coimbatore and western ghats so that reporter thought that uh, you know even as a reporter i am not you know blaming reporting i have done much idiotic mistakes right so i am not uh, blaming the media i am a part of the media right so that reporter was new to coimbatore so he, that person thought singanallur is a wild area and you know imagine the trauma he and when he didn't come out of his home or the studio for two three days and the seniors the others they went there and they told uh, and you know it happens this is misinformation you know this is one small anecdote Uh, to make you all you know to bit to uh, from uh, in between the serious stuff i am telling you the next one and i sent uh, two of my best uh, better images uh, this uh, was an image you know this i used for conservation photography like 
uh, i used to tell that these my elephants are uh, traveling about 2000 meters above sea level they've lost their migratory path that is all you know wildlife thing and what is pictorial here but actually i had uh, you know clipped my images for my website so i couldn't go to the raw tiff and get the full frame so this is not ideally uh, pictorial because uh, the components are missing of course you have the shola and the grassland so i send this image to jayraman and this is what he did the next image what he has done is he has added the uh, summer grass you could have seen no on top you know of course that cannot match you cannot uh, recreate uh, you cannot manipulate uh, nature recreate nature just for an example he has done this so if you are taking an image of a wildlife you have a conservation message you have a news angle fine but he he is stressing the fact you know for a wildlife photographer subject is one third and habitat is two thirds only if you focus on subject it, it's not enough you know you can take a tiger in a zoo close up and you can claim i took it from the forest no so the habitat is important so two third habitat and one third subject you know even the elephant is leaving the other side that is different because i can tell that's a conservation message elephants are going nowhere that is the message i wish to tell so how i think uh, you can see it again uh, we'll go to the previous image and then come back so that you'll realize the difference so it's tightly cropped and uh, the pictorial need more details that is the background also this image then the next one another image he also helped me so this is one uh, vulture image which we spotted in tengamaradala tengamarada this is eastern ghats you know satyamangalam is a, it's, it's a place it's a vital place where eastern ghats is joining with western ghats so in that valley the tengamarada village where moyar and uh, bhavani they join together and uh, it becomes a sagar bhavani sagar so that area known for uh, you know this uh, you know you know endangered species the vultures so i was taking an image you know handheld image you know i was you no know, i couldn't sleep for another two three days because handheld image such a, a sharp image you know and the background you can see two vultures flying and they got blurred because of slow shutter speed so i could uh, you know blah blah myself see i have taken an image with all the handheld little thing but he told okay that is fine that is to show your skill but what is needed for your the audience it has to be clear so he taught me the lesson a pictorial how to convert this an ideal pictorial should be like this so he made you know he worked for me see not like he works for me he actually he guided for me he tutored for me so so clear so go back and uh, come here come again so we are this is my image you know you can see in the foreground and the background you know a lot of disturbances or noise digital noise so a typical pictorial you know perfect of course you can see the mountains clearly here you know the bald mountains the bald uh, or the vulture you know the bald uh, bark so the future is bleak or something so that message is conveyed and this is an uh, this is what i could do as a pictorial the rest of the images are mine i cannot classify itself as 100% pictorial because as i told you know i have cropped it uh, for uh, the slide purpose you know i used to put it in my website and as a result i have compressed it you know the more uh, preference was given to the subject so i'll tell you, i'll take you to the uh, to the slides of uh, mine these are elephants uh, in my area this is just 2 uh, kilometers from my farm they are called as uh, you know vinayagan and chinnathambi or chinnathambi periyathambi you know people used to you know they became so uh, you know people friendly and people you go there used to take selfie with them also and this is how i could uh, compose one one image with them you know and uh, the smaller one bigger elephant and uh, you know i have uh, framed this uh, the, the tree another wild tree and it is in a pata land adjoining the forest so this is the typical habitat uh, for asian elephants and this should be you know any wildlife photographer's dream you know charging elephant don't try this it's a disturbing wildlife somehow i made the mistake and here you know this is vinad forest you can see you know even the the grass huh, from falling down withering down from its back you can see the real action there the ears 
you know stiff ears the uh, the body especially in the belly you know it bulges it, it 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 becomes like a ball and pounces on you and this is luckily this was a mark charge we survived and those uh, trees you know good frames like and this was my sighting the god you know i was telling you 100 treks each trek around 2 to 3 days around 250 days in the jungle at last in nilgiris uh in moyar valley you know upper plateau not in the moyar valley just above it a place near to congress metam we found this god and you know this is lantana and this this may not be a uh, pictorial because it's not so clear and only if i could you know blow it up i can show you the eyes but that is the god that is the tiger for me once i sighted this tiger my interest you know it came down okay i wanted to see a tiger a king cobra i saw them then i slowed down and of course becoming a teacher getting into administration now looking after uh, the administration works you know we don't have time to do all those things and we have technology and uh, being digital immigrants and which time we you know allow the youngsters the students are taking better photographs than so this was one you know milestone in my career and this is what uh, like another uh, thing which i cherish the most this is a malabar uh, pied hornbill it's endemic to western ghats we took this in uh, you know uh, near uh, uh, the the pillu dam so the the tree the speciality is you know this bird uh, it has its nest here they they stay there and uh, uh, it it was in jan Th- these are not flowers these are leaves those you know blossoming leaves the cherry red color you know that is so bright and this bird is almost colorless it has a pale yellow uh, beak and uh, you know black and white in color that's all but the image looks so colorful you know more, so vibrant because of the the background and the foreground so this is this tells you right you you don't see any trees in town you don't see such trees in uh, metros this you can see only near the in the riverine forest so that tells everything malabar pied hornbill and uh, this is a technique called scaling this is the biggest moth found in india you know the size will be like this around uh, uh, 8 to 9 inches imagine when it flies you now butterflies are called as uh, floating jewels this is not a butterfly moth is different from a butterfly and imagine when it flies that is marvel so i used my pen while it was sitting on a grass to show the scaling so this is again bringing details to tell a story to, to create a history to document it we use this technique this was by uh, not my image by t vijay who is with the uh, uh, vigadan group of publications and what an impact this has and we talk about you know how linear structures they disturb the forest and i need to tell you this gives us a chance to tell the story because in india now we are telling you know, we are happy that we have around 3000 tigers 70% of tigers of the world with us but what about its habitat you take today's news they have told clearly one third of the tigers that is 1000 tigers are living outside protected areas outside tiger reserves so what will they do they'll come out venture into the village they'll cattle lifting people will poison threat to human beings no the problem starts now so we we can be happy but cannot remain complacent we need to work on improving the quality of the forest but what is happening people want roads people want railway lines people want tourism people people want everything in the forest they disturb it you construct a road this is likely to happen especially lion tail macaques again endemic to this is a bonnet macaque lion tail macaque i know they jump from arboreal they jump from one tree to another tree when you cut a road in between they have to walk down when they walk down they might happen to be victims like this so this is one good image a road you know you can see the uh, end of it leading nowhere and uh, travel also when motorcyclist going and you see the blood of course we should avoid blood you could have seen a uh, tsunami image the award winning image by an indian photographer data you know one arm a lady lying with an arm crying and uh, you know another arm lying there it was a 
dead body, something like that. So, but this is something I discuss, epidemiological or something, you know, try to hit it hard. So this will make people realize how linear structures disturb wildlife. This is another example of our uh, habitat. So this area, the elephants are visited. No, I showed you the previous image. Imagine it's, it's a heaven on earth. And uh, you know, like, like we don't get snow here in Western Ghats. And you should realize, you know, the difference between Western Ghats and Himalayas. Himalayas, the ice melts, we get water. And uh, Western Ghats, there is no ice. We get only from rain. And this rain is stored in this grass. And from the grass, it trickles down to the Shola forest. And then the rivers, you know, start uh, getting sourced in. So th this is a story. This will help people uh, create stories. You know, you can tell a lot. You can talk for hours and hours. And uh, this was taken around uh, mid-noon, around 1 o'clock. We were traveling uh, with for the then uh, uh, the Tiger Reserve Director, uh, Rakesh uh, Dogra. He took us for a trip and this is Appa Bhavani at uh, mid-noon. This is Rhododendron Nilagirikam and you see the dam, how a river is constructed into a dam. You, you stop a river, it becomes a dam and that is how the water level rises and uh, the path of animals, the, the flora, the fauna is disturbed. That is another story we can tell. You see, it's almost you know monochromatic. So this, I would, uh, you know, submit it for uh, uh, persons who, who are in the jury. And, you know, uh, pictorial is a subject uh, which is celebrated in uh, many of the international uh, salons. And uh, our people in Coimbatore, they've been the jury, you know, for uh, many of the events happening all over the world. Anything in Asia, they are the authority. And... Uh, these are some of the links, and I don't think I can explain anything on this. But after the session gets over, you can open it up. You want to know more about pictorial because I would have failed to explain much about pictorial, you know, talking theory too much in a webinar that too on an afternoon. And uh, today being a tiger day, you would have heard a lot about wildlife and stories on like that. So these are, you know, again, the, you know, it, it's, uh, it was Jairam who helped me. I know he came out with all these suggestions, you know, I entered in and I got some points. And if you are really interested, you know, to elevate your images from photographs to pictorials, just go through these links, you know, get inside, you'll learn a lot and you'll become a, you know, a matured photographer. You know, you people will come behind you. And uh, if you have technology, you follow this aesthetic sense, composition, you did it. And uh, the last slide. And uh, I've given my, you know, a I told you ARPS, EFIAP of Jairam is another French honor. I, I used to, you know, I, he's from Coimbatore, but it's it's like belittling him if I take uh, Coimbatore for him. He's a nature photographer for the whole world of India. And uh, the message which I confirm, you know, one, you no, know, this is a safeguarding thing. Why I've used this quote here is, this is one answer for all your questions, which is likely to come. What is focus and who has the right to say what focus is legitimate focus? Understood? So what is focus? You have something in your mind and your focus will be different from that of mine. And when I tell it to you, you might consider it as totally, you know, blurred one. So this is what is happening with media. And this is what we are dealing with media literacy. This is what with me dealing with uh, media information literacy. We had a good class yesterday also. And with this, I think uh, I've taken enough time. I think uh, the moderators, uh, 350, something like, I've taken my 45 minutes of time. I hope uh, uh, you won't, uh, I stop before you interrupting. And I'm open for questions. Do a treat for all the I mean, like today's lecture was a real visible treat for all of us. I love the way that you intersperse this theory and the academic discourse along with those beautiful photographs and especially weaved in those interesting stories and anecdotes into it. Of course, some of them, we felt so nice hearing about it. And uh, some images were really heartbreaking, really makes us think. 
I would also like to place on record our sincere thanks from the team KCLAs to Jairaman sir and all the other photographers for sharing with us and letting us see your beautiful images. I really hope you can join us and enlighten our students someday and us too, of course. And as you all know, our webinar series is for six days. Today is the third day. We are halfway through. I'm already amazed to tell you, you, the audience, have been awesome. When I peep into the live chat boxes, it's truly a set testament, you know, of the excellent content in your session, JP, sir. I can simply say that today has been a great success. But of course, we have some wonderful questions from our participants, which I'm sure you're also going to really enjoy answering. I promise you today we'll take on quite a few questions and uh, we'll definitely make sure that all your questions are heard. Don't worry. So we have the first question from uh, Ms. Parminda Kaur Sandhu. This is the third day she's joining us with some really interesting questions. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Parminda Kaur from Chitkara University, Punjab. I'm an amateur photographer, but I believe that there's an ugly side to wildlife photography with camera totting tourists and unprofessional people in search of their perfect shot to become a danger to wildlife and habitats. Your take on that, sir. Uh, so I think you're on mute, sir. I'm sorry, oh. I've just unmuted you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is it audible now? Yes. Uh, like I told you, you know, while uh, the, I showed you the, the elephant mock charge, I shouldn't have done it. Actually, we were uh, traveling in a vehicle. The elephant was coming in and uh, we have no other go. We had to stop our vehicle. And from inside the vehicle, we took that image. And uh, it is its own area. We are the intruders and we are telling it is charging us. It's, it's not charging us. It is guarding its kids, calves. No, they were there in the bush. They came out later. So coming to her question, like you, we could have seen the, how they take images of tigers in, you know, Rantambur and North Indian parks. No, it's like a studio. No, I know seven, eight safari jeeps around and disturbing them. They have a name for them and they're, you know, the radio colors on them. It, it has become totally artificial. And as I told you, the story of uh, uh, wildlife estimate, gone are the days. 15 years back, we did the, uh, Wildlife estimate, estimate on foot. We carried the zoom lens, the wide angle lens, everything to document something. But today, camera trap, nobody is permitted inside. So even tourism is not allowed. And you know, everyone wants to get into forests. What, what purpose? You know, we can classify them into nature lovers, nature enthusiasts, nature conservationists. So according to me, even I have stopped getting into forests. It's become five, six years I have not ventured into forest because there is no role for me. I can do activism or I can speak about uh, conservation. That's all. I cannot take good images. So let us not disturb it. So uh, getting into the forest in the name of wildlife photography. In fact, I don't believe in this genre called uh, wildlife photography. It's gone. We have to be conservation photographers. That's all. You can become an animal photographer, not wildlife photographer. If you are a wildlife photographer, you have to contribute to its conservation. Then you grow up as a conservation photographer. So it's better not to disturb the animals in the wild. Let us not manipulate with nature. Let us not play with them. Very true, sir. I absolutely understand. Uh, we have a question from James Amara Koroma from the Fora Bay College from uh, University of Sierra Leone. She's an engineer faculty. Sorry, he's an engineer faculty. Um, how can one integrate photography and that of biodiversity of conservation without disturbing the animals' residences. It's pretty related to the previous question, but yeah. yeah. It's, it's like without disturbing their habitat. Like here comes this uh, tourism. You know, we get inside, we intrude in the name of tourism. We pay some money for the safari, the, the, the pay, and we, we get in, we tip him the, the driver, you know, spend, uh, take us to a different route where you have sighted as a tiger, all the possibilities, you know, we try to get inside. but. That has to be avoided, as I told you earlier. And uh, what can be done is you know, reduce the number of tourists. Of course, if you want, you can have it in the peripheries, the buffer areas. Let us not allow tourism in the core zones. Let us not disturb their habitat. You know, there are birds, animals. Some of the animals, you know, they'll kill even their offsprings 
if they are disturbed by uh, human beings. There are elephants, even in Coimbatore Forest Department, they know when an elephant, uh, you know, we disturb them, when the calf gets, you know, isolated from the mother elephant, and we human beings go there, we treat them, give them food, and uh, the smell of human beings, you know, it, it gets into this calf, and the mother elephant, when it comes back, it never, you know, attaches it again. So the elephant will be orphaned. The calf will be orphaned. So better we stay away. That is the only thing. Since we have all the technology like camera traps and professionals like, like even now, uh, Mr. Jairam and others, you know, the people from uh, Kerala, the forest department, they come here, they take him, they keep him there in the jungles for two, three days. Every weekend they take him, they, they, they come back. So, you know, you know, real conservationists, professionals can get in. Others, we need to stay away. That is the only way uh, to conserve. True, sir. Uh, we have Dr. Kalpana uh, from GCT Coimbatore. Her question is, did you face any ethical dilemma as a wildlife photographer? If yes, please share the details of that situation. <laughs> Previous two questions, I've answered it. I think ethical dilemma, I'm, I'm accepting, no. Those days, I wanted to see a tiger. So today, anybody you venture, you plan for a trek or two, you can sight a tiger. So I wasted 100 days, 100 treks. So to look at a tiger. So what, 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 do, what does it matter? See, I want to see a tiger. What does it matter for the tiger? Does it want to see me, this Jay Prakash, great photographer, so-called... He wants to meet me. I'll go and meet him, say salute to him. No, he's afraid of me. He'll run away. The smell of my, you know, food. No, oh, this creature called man is coming to conquer us. So we'll run away. So stay away. So that is what uh, the answer. And I've been telling it repeatedly. And uh, can I do it fast? Because if the questions are more, I'll read it. I'll answer it. Sure, sir. Yes. Sure, sir. Uh, Shivam Balaji, uh, Chitkara University, Delhi. What do you mean by ethics in photography and capturing the right moment in the mind uh, uh, in the Kevin Carter case? So I don't, I, I, I'm not mentioning about the Carter, Kevin Carter case, but uh, the timing, of course, the moment matters. You know, that is why we have the element, the shutter speed. You know, when we have the uh, aperture, shutter speed, uh, and all those things, the, the moments matter. You know, we call it as the neck of the moment. And uh, wildlife photography also, of course, lighting also matter. We'll have to look at the aperture. But the right timing. Uh, once, you know, I learned a lesson from TNA Permal. So we were uh, staying uh, in a school that again, again, and it was sponsored by our uh, PSG management. And uh, they helped us to stay there. And uh, uh, they'll uh, take us for a small trek, of course, with the permission of the, the forest department. So an elephant came in and I was the first to take my zoom thing and do click, click, click and disturb it. The TNA Bermal, you know, he told, you know, just keep cool. Then he took his camera and he waited. Don't take, wait. So this elephant went away behind it. Seven elephant. It was a parade. So the moment matters. Wildlife is not just recording. It's, it's a pictorial life. So the right timing, you have to wait and you have the patience, perseverance. And, you know, I was telling you about the tree. I, I, I used to go every month to that area, the riverine forest in uh, Pillu Dam. I was waiting for that, you know, the leaves to sprout, to get that color. So I would have worked for it for a year. I was waiting for that particular day. So that matters. So timing matters. It's really, it will really work out. And uh, Sovik Acharya, uh, which place you love the most from Kolkata? So I can't tell which, this is a good forest, this is a bad forest. No. Even your backyard. See, my farm is the biggest forest which I love now. You know, now I realize I should not disturb the animals. They never want Jay Prakash to come and photograph it. Because we are narcissistic. We want selfies to be, you know, I wear this, all these things to project myself as a great teacher or something. But they don't do all these things. They they want to remain free free ranging. So that in my mind, what I did was, you know, it's my thought evolution or something. I had my farm, ancestors' farm in Taragam. I converted into an organic farm, got it certified by 
in the Tamil Nadu Organic Certification Department. And I planted 100 different species of trees. And any time anyone visits it, you can identify at least 10 species of butterflies and 20 species of birds and enormous number of uh, insects. So I have a mini forest, of course. What we could create is only plantation. Human beings, we can't create a forest. We could plant and that will be only a plantation, not a forest. But my area, you come there, the flora, the fauna, the dew drop, the rain, everything is lovely. You can take better images. Like I told you, the tigers, one third, thousand tigers are roaming outside the tiger reserve. So there is nothing called good forest, you know, that is needed. The earth knows it, you know, the, when there is a Shola forest, there should be a desert. This is the balance. And even in Tamil literature, you could have seen, you know, Mullai, Marudam, Naidal, Palai, everything. They've, they've classified those days, five types of land. And you can't tell Palai is bad, you know. In Palai, you have, uh, you know, those creatures, uh, reptiles. That is to maintain a cycle. So I won't rate anything good, anything bad. It might be good for photographers to take an image. But when you talk in terms of cons uh, conservation, like I showed you, no, uh, Mr. Uh, Jairam's image, three of them doing a chat the morning light. So that makes a good image. That was a road, not a forest. That's it. Then Amit Amlan Patnaik. Media literacy initiatives and practice address equity, access, and digital use. The divide through pictorials and advocacy for policy making. Of course, this is a bigger one, complex thing. Hyderabad uh, professor from uh, St. Mary's College. Like literacy initiative like we've been doing. Like lots of myths are there. If that is another class, I have lots of slides. How, as a media person, I made lots of mistakes. Like I was telling, you know, the Srinivasan story, spotting a tiger in uh, Singhanalur. Lots of myths are there regarding wildlife, especially the ones which we are afraid of, snakes, king cobras. You know, there is a story in our area, like the cobras, they come in the night uh, during that uh, no moon day, they'll spit that uh, diamond, Nagaratna, and that is so costly. And... Uh, they, it will spit the diamond and in its light, it will search for uh, insects and then it will go away. At the time you go, you you put a cow dung on it and you get it, you become a rich man. And, you know, a lot of stories about snakes, tigers, elephants, you know, lots of cocks and bull, cock and bull stories created by human beings. But, you know, they, they are totally undisturbed. They don't care for us. They remain in their homes. You know, human being is just one species in around 20 billion species in the earth and we are the last two who have evolved and we think we are controlling them we are the masters of this earth no they are all seniors to us so let us not disturb them and it is their world and uh, we should realize their freedom we should not misrepresent them so in order to prevent this uh, like this media literacy campaign is on fact checking is on so we need to discuss this with the scientists so conservationists. So I would like to introduce you another team which is doing well in this uh, digital era. That is the Nature in Focus. You know, every year, August or September in Bangalore, uh, you know, people led by Kalyan Verma and team, you know, they created the Nature Watch some 10 years back. You know, I used to look at their images, you know, wow, then I follow their techniques. Now they're into conservation. They conduct, uh, you know, conservation classes photographic classes and they take students only to buffer areas just to you know uh, it's a sensitization program so that is the need of the art we need to sensitize the program uh, the journalists the media in fact uh, we have wildlife conservation society center for science and environment indian institute of science we have a lot of scientists and uh, you know we need to give preference for them like uh, health you no know, like in the gdp or in the news coverage did we give so much of space for health but today you see lots of articles, you know, so much on health. One small microbe, which is not even visible to the eye, it, you know, throughout all our agenda, totally hijacked. Everything is behind COVID. The economy is behind our COVID. Whoever is considered as the most powerful man, he has to mask himself. Mask or unmask, a microbe decides. So, you know, a lot we need to learn from nature. So learn from nature. Let us not disturb nature. If we don't know anything, you know, as media persons, as media professors, we should identify the real sources. And uh, my, even my research, you know, it was like uh, 20 years back, 
it was like the sources used to tell the news the report of the media used to get from official sources but today ngos scientists conservationists are coming in and they are coming out the real uh, news items and that helps in improving the media literacy that is improving the quality of information then vidya rajagopal uh, i think she's from uh, uh, vidya raman uh, another uh, earlier colleague of mine enhancing pictures to pictorials with technology is a visual treat but does the technology hinder from creativity make it lose their originality your opinion now i told uh, myself you know i'm very poor in photoshop and uh, uh, lightroom so whatever i take i stop with that but if you want to take it far and wide you need professionalism like like our teachers they would have taught us a b c d it all depends what word we talk and what we write we are given with the camera the tool the pen we we taught with a b c d and uh, what we write that matters so what we produce that also matters so we need to do some uh, pictorial some message has to be driven in and every time we cannot compose it in the right way so sometimes we need to add details and uh, ultimately it should do the information part the message it should carry a message that is what so we need that you just can't tell like me that no i am um, i am a poor in uh, uh, digital literacy so i can't do all those things i can deploy another person no you can do it and uh, if you do it you'll get the right lighting see instead i can tell you add a blue color to my slide it won't work out it matches now the next revathi k uh, you been a journalist photographer educator administrator which you feel is most challenging most effective and thoughtful expression for the society of course teaching teaching is reaching as a photographer i was a technician dump it in my website people look at it likes 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 happy educator administrator again you know i might be a poor administrator also educator it's i'm very happy what i'm doing i'm not administering you i'm teaching you something i'm trying to put in some conservation message in the name of teaching pictorial to you so if an educator decides he can change the whole world you see all the great personalities they were all great educators great teachers and uh, people are afraid like with the digital that might be another question with the digital things coming in the teacher is becoming a uh, a, a guide in the side no we still have teachers we remember them no we need people to identify and highlight the right uh, message otherwise you'll end up in a pile of garbage information garbage yes you are muted yeah i think we've taken on quite a few questions today and we are deeply thankful to you all for sending up these questions of course we are running short of time but we'll surely compile your questions and we'll send it across to jp sir and he will definitely get back to you with his perspectives on that with this we come to the end of the session today i would like to thank the management principal ma'am other department faculty and the non teaching staff for their undivided encouragement and support you're a backbone for this webinar series to materialize and of course our enthusiastic participants for their robust participation I would also like to thank Dr. J P for the visual journey that was simply excellent. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to also extend a sincere thank you to UNESCO Gap Mill and our media partner, the News Minute. I can't wait to continue this conversation and sort of extrapolate it tomorrow to include discussions on connecting media and information literacy with Dr. Padma Rani, Professor and Director, Manipal Institute of Communication, Manipal, Dubai. I request all our wonderful participants to come back tomorrow the 30th of July at the same time 3 to 4 pm. Thank you once again JP sir you've been an amazing expert and we are truly touched. I can't tell you the kind of we had botanists coming in we've had photographers coming in we've had people from literally across the globe coming in today. I'm so happy to have been here with you today sir. and so humble you are to your management and my management they permitted us to perform the duty of passing media literacy to every nook and corner in this world thank you again we'll meet tomorrow yes sir 
So the feedback form has been posted now on the screen. We're just posting it. Please note that the feedback link today is the, the code is pictorial. Your certificates are all getting ready. And we are listening to your feedback every day and improvising our webinar day by day. Thank you so much for all that constructive feedback. Here is the lineup of events for the next three days.